So what are your thoughts on Tether and is the systemic risk to cryptocurrency market? I'm interested in investing, but it seems Tether is unbanked and its demise could be a black swan event. I see the upside of crypto, but I just can't bring myself to invest. Yeah, so the broader question is just about <clears throat> how to be a good investor. And uh, you know, to the extent that you're asking for specific investment advice, nobody who's any good gives actionable investment advice online because they know that's not how investing works. If someone tells you what to buy, they're not gonna be there to tell you what to, when to sell. And without any underlying explanation of why you should be buying or selling something, you're essentially just listening to an astrologer. And <clears throat> there's, no, there's no reason for them to tell you what to do unless they're sort of you know, pumping their own holdings. So you should always be very suspect when someone gives you a buy signal. Now, there are buy signals that people can send that don't necessarily move the market, like I could say buy Bitcoin, but even then it's sort of irresponsible to put somebody into an asset where they don't understand the thing. So <clears throat> I think the, the problem here is that the questioners are pursuing wealth creation without understanding this is not possible. Wealth is a byproduct of understanding. It is not a substitute for understanding. It is not something you do instead of understanding. Yes, there's always the occasional person who gets lucky and sure enough, when they get lucky, you hear about it. But for every one of them who gets unlucky, there's, a, there's many that don't and you don't hear from those people. Winners are very loud and losers tend to be very quiet. So the same person can be telling you about the incredible trades they made all year. And then when they go bankrupt all of a sudden because they were trading on margin or they didn't really know what they were doing, you're not going to hear about it or you're not going to hear from them. So I, I just, <clears throat> I would give up on this whole idea of trying to find investment advice um, from other people. You just have to sort of figure it out yourself. And that's also where you get paid. You get paid not for being right when everybody else is right, because then it's already priced in. And you don't get paid for being wrong because then you're just wrong, you lose money. So you only get paid for being right when others are wrong. And that's not gonna happen because of online investment advice. That's gonna happen because you genuinely understood the situation better than most people around you. And so the specific question that was posed in this context is about Tether, which is a stable coin that is backed by a company and people don't necessarily always trust this company. And so they're saying, is this a systemic risk, a black swan risk to Bitcoin? If you're kind of asking that, that tells me you don't really understand Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin exists independent of Tether, whether Tether turns out to be a scam or a FUD or not, um, which I think is incredibly unlikely, by the way, the Tether, the FUD about Tether has been going on for as long as I can remember being in crypto. Um, and it's just turned out not to be true, at least so far. It's not to say it can happen. We're not inductivists, you know, black swan events do happen. But if black, if there were gonna be no black swans between here and, you know, the end game for crypto, then Bitcoin would already be at a million dollars a coin or higher. So there are still, uh, large risks uh, out there, but I don't think there is easy to predict as reading someone's tweet storm on Tether. That FUD is as old as the hills. But anyway, you need to learn enough about Bitcoin that you can then decide for yourself whether that is going to be true or not. And there's there's no education I can give you here in like a minute. There are lots and lots of people who have written lots of good work on both sides of it. But if you don't understand it yourself, then you have no business investing in it. Um, from me personally, that makes a ton of sense. Um, this is in a similar breath, and I actually have Enrique here, so I'm gonna pull him up for a second, invite to speak. So Enrique was asking um, kind of in the same vein, but more like big picture. He's thinking, his question was, based on Warren Buffett, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. In the current crypto world, what do you think would be an indicator to be fearful and what would be an indicator to be greedy? Yeah, so I don't, I don't invest like Warren Buffett invests. Warren Buffett is a very different class of investor. Uh, I am more of a venture investor. He's a value investor. The, the thing that value investor and venture investors have in common is that they tend to both hold for the very long term. Uh, very patient, very long-term games. But then they diverge. A value investor is looking at the price and they're looking for a good price and they're looking at timing, when to get in and when to get out based on the price. And hopefully you'll get into a business at a low price and it's a good business and it compounds for decades and you don't have to get out. That's the ideal situation for a value investor. A venture investor is very different. We invest very early when it's just a hope and a prayer. When it's so cheap that like the details of the price don't matter, it's still, if it works, it's gonna be orders of magnitude less than it will be worth. And if it uh, doesn't work, it's gonna be worth zero. And we build a broad portfolio, which is a value investor we build a narrow portfolio. So I can't interpret a Buffett quote for you in the concept of crypto. I don't think it actually applies 
I think basically, if you believe in the Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on technologies and stories, and if you understand them really well, then you're likely to either not agree with them, in which case you wouldn't buy them, or you would agree with them, in which case you think they're ludicrously underpriced compared to where they will eventually end up once they pass or all their black swan tests. Uh, so I don't think the Warren Buffett strategy applies. I don't think you want to time your entrance or exit into an asset class that is either going to go 10x or 20x from here or go to zero. That's not how you think about it. It's a binary bet. So you just have to decide whether you have the conviction and the fortitude or not. And if you do, then maybe you average in over some time period so as to not be exposed to sudden price swings and movements. Uh, and then you just kind of put it away and, and you hold for the long haul. You know, it, like it would be Bitcoin HODL or Ethan Chill.